So as a driver, when you drive around, you see pedestrians, you see people crossing the road, you see um, obstacles on the road that you might want to avoid, okay? And what happens is that when a car uh, is moving, it's going to stop, but it would take some time to stop and it would depend on how fast you would apply the brakes, okay? So the first thing I want you to bring back uh, to your understanding of this topic is reaction time. Okay, so the reaction time is the time between sensing the situation and applying the brakes. So in scene one, we might see um, a person who's crossing the road here. Okay, and let's say you're the driver, you are driving towards this person. And once you see them, you would have some time to react and go, oh, there's this person uh, tr crossing the road at the wrong time. I need to apply the brakes. So during that time, they react and then they apply the brake. So between the time that the person sees a child and the person applying the brakes here, that is what we call the reaction time. And the average reaction time is around 2.5 seconds. Okay, it depends on how fast you are and every person's different. Okay, now what about reaction distance? That is the distance traveled during your reaction time. So between the time that you see the person, okay, and the time when you apply the brakes, you would have traveled some distance, okay? Because the car is still moving, okay? And even when you apply the brakes here, you are going to still move, but you're going to slow down, right? So between these two um, places here, you're gonna be traveling a constant speed of whatever it is, okay? So next thing is our braking distance. That is the distance traveled from when you apply the brakes until you stop. So let's revert back to what we're doing. Uh, so you're here, you see the child on the road, and then you apply the brakes here. And what happens is from this point to this point, you're still traveling, okay? But you're slowing down. And over here, you're going to basically stop, okay? So between the time when you apply the brakes and you stop, you're gonna travel some distance here. And that's what we call braking distance. Okay, so it's the, the car that travels this distance after hitting the brakes, right? Now, stopping distance, what uh, this chapter, or I should say exercise, is all about is the total distance that has uh, been made from the time when you saw this person or obstacle on the road till when you stopped. Okay, so that com is comprised of reaction distance and that braking distance that we mentioned earlier. So again, the reaction distance is the distance that has been covered uh, after you have seen the person to when you apply the brakes and between when you apply the brakes here to when you stop, that is our braking distance. So that in total is our stopping distance. Okay. Now, the braking distance formula can be approximated using d equals kv squared. So that k value there could be some value like 0 0.05, 0 0.06, whatever it is, okay? And it really depends on situation to situation. This is not on your reference sheet, by the way. And on the HSA question, it would actually specify the formula as well as the k value, possibly, uh, within the question, okay? Um, an interesting thing that I find about this question, uh, this is not a question, this formula is that D is in meters, whereas V, which is our velocity or speed in this case, uh, is in kilometers per hour. Okay, just to make sure that you know that usually formulas require us to have the same kind of units, like both meters or both kilometers. This one is in meters, this one's in kilometers per hour. Right. Now, in example seven, Ben has a reaction time of 1.5 seconds. He was driving 60 kilometers per hour when he saw a tree had fallen across the road. He had applied his brakes and stopped 17.4 meters later. What was his reaction distance to the nearest meter? Okay, so um, when you draw your distance, uh, speed and time triangle, okay, this one here, right? If we're finding out what distance is, okay, that's basically speed times by time. So 
what we're going to do here is we've got to convert 60 kilometers per hour, which is this um, speed here, to meters per second first. Okay? So 60 kilometers, as you know, every kilometer here is going to be a thousand meters. So we times it by a thousand, okay, to get it into 60,000 meters per hour. Okay? And then what we do is every hour is 3,600 seconds. That's the same thing as 60 times by 60 uh, seconds. So once we put that in our calculators, we get that number there. So the car is moving 16.666 meters per second, which is 16 and two thirds of a meter per second. Okay? So what we've just found out was the speed, All right? So remember how I said earlier that distance here, okay, is speed times time, okay? So it's very important here in this particular formula that uh, speed is in meters per second and time's also in the um, units here, the time units here, which is seconds. So now that we have that, okay, our speed, remember, was 60, okay, that should have been written there, times time, which is 16.66, but that's 16 and two thirds. Okay, so once these two numbers multiply, they give you uh, 25 meters. Now, uh, so the reaction time is just 25 meters. That's it. So remember, that's the time uh, between when Ben saw the tree fall uh, to when he started putting his foot in the brakes and he traveled some distance. Okay, and that's his reaction distance. Now, Part B, what was his stopping distance? So stopping distance refers to the time when he saw that tree fall to when he stopped. So stopping distance, remember, is a combination of, let's have a look back at the notes, uh, reaction distance and breaking distance. So we just found out reaction distance, which was 25 meters, okay? Now, if we look back at the information there, okay, now, breaking distance here, which is the distance from when he first put his foot on the brakes to when he stopped, was this amount here. Okay? So, it, it took the car 17.4 meters uh, ahead, okay? So, uh, until he finally went to, to a stop, okay? And that was it. So the total stopping distance will be that reaction distance that we found earlier, that 25 meters, plus by 17.4 meters amount of distance to stop. So adding those two numbers together will give you 42.4 meters, okay? So that's quite a lot of distance given that uh, he's traveled 60 kilometers per hour, right? Now, in question C, use the breaking distance formula, D equals KV squared and the given values to find the value of K corrected to the significant figures. So if we're finding the value of k here, which is just a constant value, just a number, um, you gotta substitute in these two values here. So uh, you're given that d here, which is your braking distance here, as 17.4 meters from when he first broke to when the car stopped. And then v is in kilometers per hour, which is right here in the information. That's how fast the car was driving. Now, if you put these two values in, so D is this, V is that, okay? All right, you get um, this result here, okay? Substitute it in. Now, all you gotta do is find that value of K. So that means you gotta divide both sides by this number, which is 60 squared, okay? But uh, what they've done is they have squared 60 to get 3,600 multiply by k to get this number. And then what they did was divide this 3,600 over to the other side. Okay, just that allows you to find k. So that 17.4 over 3,600 does give you this uh, long number, but because we're ran into two significant figures, we start from the very first number that's not zero and count two numbers, so one, two. And so this number here, which is number three, determines what this number turns into which is going to be uh, just 4 8 because that 3 there is under 5. Okay, so that's what it is. So 0 0.0048 is our approximate value for k. 
which is great because now what we do uh, is that k value can go back here into the formula and now we have that complete formula relating d and v okay so uh, part two we got to find out the braking distance right when traveling 84 kilometers per hour so um, what that is here is our v value which is our velocity or speed that's how fast the car is traveling our k value as we saw earlier in part i was 0.048 so um, this is our format established earlier but now we've got our k value as this our v value as uh, 84 kilometers per hour so d which is our braking distance is now those two things stumped together so that would return to us uh, 33.8688 okay i'm sure there's um actually no, there's no, no more numbers it's just that uh which approximates to 34 meters okay that's the nearest meter since that first number after dot is eight okay so the breaking distance is 34 meters part three so last time we visited a breaking distance this time we're looking at